Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's Wednesday video of devotional filmed from a whole new location uh, up in the choir loft this week because the sanctuary is set up for the Bridges and Hose play that they are putting on. Um, but it works out because the organ is actually going to play a part in the faith moment this week. So, um, yeah, I hope you're having a good week and that you are enjoying this beautiful first day of spring and that you take some time to enjoy and relax in the sunlight before starting in on that dreaded spring cleaning. And remember that this is our community, this is our boost, our little faith moment for the week to get us to Sunday when we get to worship together as a group of people at Holy Trinity, as a community of love and food and prayer and worship. Uh, so I really hope that you will consider uh, sharing a story sometime and letting me know when you want to do that. Would you please pray with me? Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for spring, for the little buds breaking up out of the ground, for the warmth of the sunlight on our face, which reminds us of the warm embrace of your grace. That as we go through this Lenten season, as we wander through our own wildernesses, that we, must, that we might always know that your grace is there. It is shining down upon us in abundance in so much that we could never run out. And we just pray for all those who are sick and in need of healing or are in need of rest in your kingdom, in the place that you have set aside for them. May you be with us all as we go throughout your creation and be good stewards of that which you have given us. Amen. The theme for this week is rebuking the devil, and our verse is Luke 4, 1 and 2. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. So. This is our Lenten verse, right? This is the verse on which we build the whole kind of season of Lent. We model the life of Jesus in the sense that for 40 days we wander in our own wildernesses. We repent and turn to things that are of God. And yeah, that is our Lent. This is kind of our foundational verse. But I think it's interesting that in talking about Lent, we do focus on the repentance and we focus on wandering in the wilderness and we focus on kind of turning back to God and all of that. But we leave out one kind of critical aspect of Lent. We talk about it maybe during your Ash Wednesday sermon, but then after that, it's not really mentioned. And that's that during this time in the wilderness, Jesus wasn't alone. There was someone else there in the wilderness with him and that someone else was the devil. And the devil tempted Jesus, and Jesus rebuked the devil and turned to things that are of God. Um, and we stopped talking about that. Uh, and I'm hoping today we might think a little bit about what it would mean to reclaim that, to reintroduce this idea of that Jesus wasn't alone, that the devil was there in the wilderness, and what does that mean for our own wandering in the wilderness during Lent? because I kind of believe that it means that when we are wandering in the wilderness during Lent, we are not alone either. That Jesus is there with us, of course. Our Lord and Savior is always with us, always giving us grace and mercy and love. But the devil is there too. The devil is there tempting us to turn to things that aren't of God, to tempt us into things that are not of the kingdom and don't bring the kingdom down here to earth. And I'm sure by now, many of you are uncomfortable because in our modern kind of church, in our modern post-enlightenment, Western intellectualism, whiteness, white churchness, we don't talk about the devil. We kind of believe talking about the devil is a sign of immaturity or naivete or of some sort of sickness. And well, that might be true and we have different beliefs about how like, well, that's just bad theology. I'm not sure 
getting rid of the devil entirely is a, the best option. I mean, as Friedrich Nietzsche said, God is dead. And while I don't necessarily believe that, I think today we've kind of convinced ourselves that while God might not be dead, the devil definitely is. We've managed to kill the devil. And instead of talking about the devil, we talk about evil. But in our conversations about evil, we enter this kind of gooey nebulous that's hard to talk about because then variably you end up talking about different levels of evil or oh is that thing really evil when it's not as bad as this other thing over here and then we just end up stop talking about it because it doesn't make us feel good it makes us uncomfortable and so my hope is that we can my hope is to kind of re-look at this language of the devil and give us something specific that if maybe we have something specific we can point to and say, that is of the devil, that is the devil. No matter how bad, how big or small it is, that's of the devil. We can begin to use language to rebuke it. And so, in order to do that, I'm going to go back into our own liturgy and our own Lutheran theology. Uh, but first, I'm going to introduce something kind of funny. Like I said earlier, it's apropos that I'm talking about rebuking the devil and sitting in front of our organ. And that's because during the 1600s, the organ was known as the devil's bagpipe. Members of the choir and members of ministry would rebuke the organ because it was the devil's and had no place in worshiping God, which is kind of funny, but they still had that language. And we have that language, too, in our baptismal liturgy, in the way we are made new, the way we are given new bodies in Christ and made members of the church. We, or our sponsors, say, have to answer and say yes to the question, do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? It's part of our entrance into the body that we defy and rebuke the devil. And even Luther in his own personal theology, in his writings, believed that the Holy Spirit gave him strength to defend the gospel. And in doing that, he was arguing with other people. But in the language he was using to argue with other people, it was never about, I mean, it was kind of, but really it wasn't about their bad theology or their bad faith. He would talk about how the arguments they were making weren't of good conscience. It wasn't the people. It was that these people had become mouthpieces of the devil and were just arguing for the devil. And so it is intrinsically part of kind of who we are and who we grew out of. And so I'm hoping we can kind of bring that back. And I'll give you an example. For Lent this year, I am giving up meat for my dinners only. Uh, because of other reasons, but I'm giving up meat for dinners. I'm only eating vegetarian. And well, that's turning to God by being healthier and treating my body better. There's also a part that I think I want to rebuke. And that's because our farming practices today are of the devil, like a lot of them are. We treat animals poorly, our other created beings, we treat so poorly in a lot of our farming practices. We treat creation, the ground and the earth and the soil and the trees we need to chop down or dig up or destroy in order to field crop, to feed animals and stuff like that. That's not good stewardship. That's of the devil and I want to rebuke that. I want to say no, that's wrong. And then I need to repent. And so I turn to good stewardship, and I turn to God, but I also need to identify the thing from which I'm return, turning from and rebuke it and say that is wrong. And so that is my invitation for you this week, that you look at your Lenten practices or you look at other times you've repented and, re and pay attention to the way you are rebuking the devil in that repentance and name it. You can name it by commenting below. You can name it in your own silent prayers to God. You can name it by emailing me or Pastor Mike or something. But I invite you to rebuke the devil and name that rebuking in your repentance. So receive this blessing. May God keep you in God's grace. May she put the shield of the Holy Spirit and the armor of God as you go and defend the gospel and rebuke the devil. And may when you fall short, may you know 
that God will always be there to welcome you back with loving arms and in a grace and mercy that is never failing. Amen.